Greetings, today is Monday, July 1, 2024. This is meteorologist Ruben Garcia. This afternoon we continue with special coverage on the impressive hurricane barrel, which has now reached the waters of the eastern Caribbean Sea after rapidly strengthening and crossing over the islands of St. Vincent and the Grenadines, and Grenada, where it passed through the region as a powerful Category 4 hurricane. For the Lesser Antilles, the worst-case scenario occurred as Hurricane Barrel completed an eyewall replacement cycle just before passing through the region, allowing it to strengthen rapidly as it moved over the area. The circulation center is now quickly moving away from the Lesser Antilles, though some outer bands will continue to affect weather conditions tonight. Here at Hurricane Info, we hope the residents of this area can quickly recover from this extreme event. The eyewall replacement cycle not only allowed Hurricane Barrel to strengthen, but also helped expand the coverage of tropical storm and hurricane force winds. As seen in this image, hurricane force winds were felt in the Grenadines and over Grenada, while tropical storm winds affected the islands of Tobago, Barbados, St. Lucia, and St. Vincent. Now we have a much larger hurricane in terms of the extent of tropical storm winds, which means when it passes south of the Dominican Republic, regions in the southwest could experience some tropical storm winds. In the second part of the video, we will specifically discuss the effects expected in Puerto Rico, the Dominican Republic, Haiti, Jamaica, the Yucatan Peninsula, and Belize over the coming days. Several Hurricane Hunter aircraft investigated the area early this afternoon, but since the missions concluded, we have seen that Hurricane Barrel has continued to improve its structure. Although the National Hurricane Center maintained its maximum sustained winds at 150 miles per hour at 5 p.m., we are waiting for another Hurricane Hunter plane to arrive to truly know how strong this hurricane is. Some of us even think it is close to becoming a Category 5 hurricane, which would set new records. For example, the current pressure of the hurricane is 944 millibars, the lowest pressure we have recorded in this Caribbean region since Hurricane Maria in 2017. Additionally, since 2000, only six hurricanes have achieved this intensity in this area. Hurricane Ivan, Hurricane Matthew, Hurricane Maria, Hurricane Irma, and Hurricane Felix. This is also the earliest in the season we have seen a hurricane with maximum sustained winds of at least 150 miles per hour. Thus, Hurricane Barrel continues to set records, and we meteorology experts are extremely impressed with today's developments. Additionally, as you can see in the visible satellite image, the yellow dots surrounding the circulation center indicate lightning around the eyewall, signaling that the hurricane is extremely powerful and possibly close to becoming a Category 5 hurricane. This is truly an extreme event and I have no doubt that the name Barrel will be retired from the official list of tropical cyclone names. To give you some context, we typically see hurricanes of these categories in August, September, and October, so Barrel is breaking the record for the strongest hurricane formed in the Atlantic this early in the year. While this is very impressive, remember that, as we have discussed over the past few months, conditions in the Atlantic are extremely favorable for a hyperactive season. For example, Hurricane Barrel is currently moving over sea surface temperatures that are nearly 30 degrees Celsius, and unfortunately, as it continues its path, it will keep moving over extremely warm waters for this time of year. Not only are the surface temperatures hot, but the ocean heat content is also increasing as it moves westward. Fortunately, wind shear might impact the circulation starting Tuesday night. Additionally, Hurricane Barrel currently has good ventilation in several quadrants at upper atmospheric levels, which has also helped this rapid intensification and maintained this high intensity for a long period. Today, we have seen the hurricane move in a zigzag pattern, which is completely normal for such powerful cyclones. Overall, the trajectory projections have not changed much. There is significant consensus among global models that it will pass south of the Dominican Republic close enough to bring some tropical storm winds to the southwest. It will then maintain its trajectory west or west-northwest, passing just south or over Jamaica. In the midterm, it is expected to reach parts of the Yucatan Peninsula and possibly enter Belize or Quintana Roo. These small changes in trajectory will be closely monitored, as they have significant implications for the effects felt over Jamaica. If it passes just south or over the island, it would be better news for the Yucatan Peninsula and Belize as it could weaken a bit. However, if it stays further south, a stronger hurricane could reach Belize and the Yucatan Peninsula. This is why I mentioned that any northward or southward change in trajectory could have significant implications in the mid and long term. Additionally, a hurricane moving further north is more likely to eventually reach Texas, while if it stays further south, it could reach parts of Tamaulipas or Veracruz in the long term. Many changes can occur in this forecast, so it is important to stay tuned to the bulletins over the coming days. The specialized intensity models project it will remain a Category 4 or 5 hurricane for at least the next 36 hours. Starting tomorrow, wind shear will begin to affect the circulation, and we expect it to start weakening as it approaches or passes over Jamaica. For now, we project it will reach the Yucatan Peninsula as a Category 1 hurricane, and pass over or very close to Jamaica as a Category 2 hurricane. 
This is precisely what the official forecast from the National Hurricane Center shows. There is still a tropical storm warning for the Lesser Antilles from Martinique to Grenada, as outer bands may bring tropical storm force gusts tonight. The projected movement to the west-northwest should continue at least until tomorrow afternoon, passing quite close to the south of the Dominican Republic and Haiti. Therefore, a tropical storm warning has been issued for parts of southwestern Dominican Republic and southern Haiti. The National Hurricane Center projects that by the early morning hours of Wednesday, it should weaken to a Category 3 hurricane. When it passes its closest point over Jamaica on Wednesday afternoon, it is projected to be a Category 2 hurricane. It will then continue its trajectory westward until it eventually moves over the Yucatan Peninsula or northern Belize, possibly as a Category 1 hurricane or strong tropical storm. Jamaica is under a hurricane watch that will likely be upgraded to a hurricane warning tomorrow. Residents of southwestern Dominican Republic, southern Haiti, and especially Jamaica, should prepare for the impact of this cyclone as hurricane conditions are expected to affect Jamaica on Wednesday. Let's look at the projections of the global models. The latest run of the GFS model shows a trajectory well south of Puerto Rico, passing about 250 kilometers south of the Dominican Republic in the early morning hours of Wednesday, eventually moving westward just south of or over Jamaica on Wednesday night, and then maintaining a westward trajectory until reaching Quintana Roo in the morning of Friday potentially as a Category 1 hurricane or strong tropical storm. It will then move into the Gulf of Mexico, maintaining a trajectory toward sectors of Tamaulipas. Comparing this projection with the European model, we see a very similar outlook, first affecting Jamaica, during the morning or afternoon of Wednesday and eventually reaching parts of southern Quintana Roo or northern Belize by Friday morning, as a Category 1 hurricane or strong tropical storm. It will then pass over Campeche and move through the southern Gulf of Mexico until reaching sectors of southern Tamaulipas or northern Veracruz by early next week. It will be a long week, but here at Hurricane Info, I will be keeping an eye on things to keep you informed. There is high confidence in the trajectory projections, as the ensemble members of different models project a very similar path to what the National Hurricane Center has marked with few anticipated changes. The next major risk is for Jamaica, where it could arrive as a Category 2 hurricane, but we cannot rule out it arriving as a Category 3 hurricane on Wednesday. Then the models agree it will enter somewhere between the Yucatan Peninsula and Belize. For now, the highest probabilities are that it will enter over central and southern Quintana Roo, crossing over Campeche. Long term, it is important for Texas, Veracruz, and Tamaulipas to remain alert to see if it takes a more northern trajectory or stays further south. Let's update on the effects expected across the Greater Antilles, the Yucatan Peninsula, and Belize over the coming days. But first, I want to invite you to subscribe to my channel. Go to the bottom of the video and click the red button that says subscribe. Then click the bell to get notifications when I record new videos. Remember, under this special coverage, I will be recording at least two videos a day one in the morning and one in the afternoon or evening, to keep you updated on the dangerous hurricane barrel. Let's start by looking at the expected effects across Puerto Rico, the Dominican Republic, and Haiti. Tropical storm winds, represented in orange in this animation, will remain south of Puerto Rico for now. No tropical storm winds are expected over the Virgin Islands or Puerto Rico. As it passes south of the Dominican Republic and Haiti, some tropical storm force wind gusts between 50 to 60 km per hour may affect parts of southwestern Dominican Republic and southern Haiti, which is why a tropical storm warning has been issued. The rest of the Dominican Republic and Haiti should not experience tropical storm force winds. These wind gusts in the southern region of the Dominican Republic and Haiti may be felt during the afternoon and evening of Tuesday. Then, on Wednesday morning, it will continue its path towards Jamaica, where hurricane force winds between 120 to 130 km per hour are expected, especially if it passes just south of the island. In terms of accumulated rainfall, the most significant amounts will remain over the Caribbean Sea and will not affect Puerto Rico and the Dominican Republic. However, some outer bands should bring between 2 to 3 inches of rain to eastern Puerto Rico and between 50 to 70 millimeters to the Dominican Republic. On Wednesday, when the circulation center passes south of Jamaica, Hurricane force winds between 120 to 130 km per hour may affect Jamaica and the Cayman Islands. For Jamaica, hurricane effects should begin on Wednesday morning and continue until Thursday morning. For the Cayman Islands, from Thursday morning until Thursday night. In terms of rainfall, the heaviest rain should fall over Jamaica, where some models project between 200 to 400 mm of rain in a 24-hour period on Wednesday, which can cause significant flooding. So, also prepare for an extreme rain event. For the Cayman Islands, between 40 to 50 millimeters of accumulated rain is expected. Remember, this projection is based on the fact that when the hurricane passes south of the Dominican Republic and Haiti, an upper-level trough in the atmosphere will impart southwest wind shear, leading to significant weakening of this cyclone. Still, we expect it to remain at least a Category 4 hurricane for the next 36 hours. Later on Friday, it should approach Quintana Roo 
where tropical storm or hurricane conditions are expected on Friday morning, extending to Campeche and Yucatan during Friday afternoon and evening before moving into the Gulf of Mexico. There is still some uncertainty as to whether it will move over central Quintana Roo, or slightly further south over northern Belize, as shown by the European model. Wind gusts in this region should be between 80 to 100 km per hour, and in terms of rainfall for the Yucatan Peninsula, between 70 to 100 mm of rain is anticipated on Friday which can cause flooding in areas with saturated soils from recent rain events. Depending on how strong it reaches the Yucatan Peninsula, these estimates could increase to 250 or 300 mm if it arrives as a Category 1 hurricane. Long term, there is uncertainty as to whether it will move over Texas or the states of Tamaulipas and Veracruz. Well, that's all for this preview. Tomorrow morning, I will record a new video to update on what is happening with Hurricane Barrel. Before I go, I want to invite you to become a member of my channel. Go to the bottom of the video and click the blue button that says join. See the different types of memberships where you can support my project and receive some additional benefits. Well, with that, I say goodbye. See you tomorrow morning.